Hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> hey, you remember the last time, excuse me, you remember the last time that uh, I did the video, right? Uh, do everybody go to heaven when they die? That was part one. Well, this is part two. And you remember I was giving you the illustration in the beginning, I was showing y'all, I said, come take a walk with me. I showed you the store and I showed you the signs that we all can relate to where it says no shirt, no service, you're not gonna get in. You know, so I use that as an illustration so you can understand that's the same way heaven is. Heaven got rules for you. You got to abide by those rules before you can get in, right? Because the whole world think that no matter how you live your life, you can get in. There's no rules. Everybody gets in that door. And that's a lie. That ain't true. But so I found a guy. <laughs> I found a guy on uh, YouTube who actually tried to get into the store without having no shirt on. And no matter what his excuses was, no matter how bad he really needed to get inside this store, the man, the security in the front, will under no circumstances let this man in this building. Y'all watch this video, we gonna talk about it. <laughs> Go get this shirt, let's get it. No, I can't be shirtless all day, as much as I'd like to. You got a shirt, sir? Sir, can I buy one? You got a shirt section? I just need a shirt. Can you just let me slide real quick? Get a shirt. Just pretend like you didn't see anything, okay? No, no. Can I buy one, do you think? Nope. Your I, friend could go buy one for you, then come oh back Oh, man. In. How am I going to know if it fits, though? No. Is it because the chest hair, is that why? No. Oh, dang. Door policy. No shirt, no service. Dang, okay. We oh. can't have that operating in here. We can't have the computer running? No. We can't have the camera operating in here. No, no. He's just doing That's some no, computing. No, no, no. Store policy. He's just doing some computing on that. No, he's computer. not doing computing. That's a camera. You can't fool me. No, no. He worked... No. He works for NASA, actually. I don't care if he works for the president. No, he doesn't work for the president, no. no. He's working on the next rocket launch. So he can't get a shirt? Oh, come on, Tim, you're killing me, man. Need a manager up the GM door, please? Oh, man, Tim. <laughs> this guy's butthurt. Look at this guy. How you doing, sir? Yeah, you're an idiot. I'm an idiot? I just need a shirt, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you got shirts out there in your car. <laughs> They're dirty, though. There's a problem. I would shop at CheeseCreamStore.com, but unfortunately, shipping's not that fast. It's fast. Don't get me wrong. Almost as fast as Amazon. All right, so there's no chance we can get in? No. All right. I appreciate it, sir. You have a great day. You oh, how you doing? Idiot, I'm an idiot? Why? I'm just trying to get a shirt. I mean, you're wasting your time calling me an idiot, aren't you? Because I'm trying to buy a shirt, I'm an idiot, man. How long have you lived here in America? It seemed like a great guy, man. I, no, how long have you lived here in America? My whole life, man. And th and this is your first time buying a shirt? <laughs> you ever buy a shirt before or no? <laughs> I hope you have a great day, okay? I'm sorry that you have to wake up on the wrong side of the bed every day, man. Every day, man. Seemed like a very happy guy. It's unfortunate people got to be like that, man. But uh, mission failed. <laughs> mission failed, boys. Get up next time. How long have you lived in America, man? This is America, bro. We're free. We can wear a shirt. We don't have to wear a shirt. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Hey, so that was crazy, right? Uh, you know, that uh, that video, man, it just shows you, man, you know, it's it's funny because this man was under the assumption. I don't know if it was a joke or whatever, but I'm just taking it for what, what I see. You know, he was under the assumption that, you know, that he can go inside this store, you know, with no shirt on. You know, and the rule, the man is telling him, nah, I, I'm sorry, I can't let you in. He's like, oh, come on, man, just let me in, man. Just turn around, you don't see it, you know? And uh, it's just the, the way he's just trying to persuade his way to get inside the store, even though the rules say if you don't have no shirt, you don't have no service. And that man told him that. He read to him the policy. And he and he was telling him the guy behind you with that camera, he can't come in here with that camera. And he trying to lie. Oh, no, nah, man, it's just a computer. He said, no, it's not. I know what it's is. You can't fool me. It's a camera. And he said he can't come in. He said, but he worked for NASA. The man said, I don't care if he worked for the president. You know, that, all your excuses don't mean nothing to me. Only thing means something to me is this policy. You know what this policy say? No shirt, no shoes. I, save your excuses, I don't want to hear it. You got to go by this policy if you want to get in here. See all these people in here? All these people in here is, is willing to abide the, by the rules. That's why they're in here. You're not going to get in here because you won't buy the rules. You know, you won't, be, you won't abide by the rules. That's why you're not in here. You say you need a shirt, I understand that, but guess what? I don't have no problem. That's not my that's not my situation. That's not my problem. That's your problem. You need to go get a shirt somewhere. You know? So basically what I'm I'm just trying to show y'all, man, that that's the same way God gonna be with heaven, man. He's just as strict, even stricter. The Bible even says that God's a strict God. You know, if God tell you that you're not gonna get in here any type of way, you're not gonna get in that type of way. And there ain't no way you're gonna be able to persuade God on the day of judgment. There's no way you think you could con your way and think you're gonna get in there. Just like that man at the at the, at the end of the video, you heard another guy calling him an idiot. He called him an idiot because he's like, man, how long you been here in America, man? You don't never have you don't have a shirt? You know? All you gotta do is put a shirt on, man, go in there, man. You're an idiot, man. That's crazy. That's stupid what you're trying to do. And the man is in denial, oh man, you know, I'm in America, man, I'm free, man, I do what I want to do. See, that's the problem. He thinks he can do what he want to do, but he been showed that day that he can't. 
And that's the same way we gonna be. We running around here around this world thinking that we could just say what we wanna say, do what we wanna do. And you think you when you die, you still gonna end up in heaven. You're gonna be turned away just like that man turned that man away from Walmart. Now let's let's get into this. First of all, you know, thank you guys for coming back for part two. Um and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna listen, man. I'm gonna try to do this every, every week, man. I'm gonna try to upload at least two, at least two minimum of uh Bible studies. You know, so we can get in this because I, I I see that y'all are hungry for this word, and I love when people are hungry for the word because hey, it's nothing more precious to me than to put time aside to go ahead and preach the word and teach the word. Hey, Amen. So uh, I want to tell you too, man. I'm not gonna hold my tongue on things because you know it's certain things that God that I know God wants us to know, and I'm gonna tell it. And YouTube might have a problem with it. So look on this right here on this very same channel in the comments. I got another YouTube channel for those of you that's, that's hungry for the word, that want to that want to learn the Bible, want to learn the basic things of Christ. Go to this YouTube channel. I'm gonna have two channels down there. One, the first one, number one, is my other YouTube channel. Now, if I ever get my videos taken down and they scratch me for a week, they might suspend me for a week. They, they I've been suspended a couple times before, so they might suspend me more than a week. So if you don't hear from me in a week in a whole two weeks. Go to this channel, number one. That's another YouTube channel. I'm not going to post that video there, but I'm going to explain to you why I'm not on the other channel and why I got suspended on my other YouTube channel. You can use my other YouTube channel to look at some videos. I talked about a lot of subjects that a lot of us need to know. That a lot, I'm sorry to say, but a lot, of, a lot of your preachers are scared to talk about it in their church. They don't want to talk about it too much on YouTube because they don't want to get, they don't want to get uh, banned or took, took it down. All right, so th that's my other YouTube channel. The first one the second one whatever video they took down on here i'm gonna put it up on rumble because see rumble respect your first amendment rumble respects your freedom of speech all right so with that being said you know i i'll post my videos on that so number one is going to be my other youtube channel when i explain to you what happened and then also when I explain it, I'll put number two down there on that channel too. But I'm going to put two right here. This is the Rumble. Anytime you want to hit Rumble, you know, you want to go to Rumble, just hit that link. It's going to take you to Rumble. And if you don't got Rumble, man, just download it. It's easy, man. It's free. You know, it's, it's free. It don't charge you nothing. I ain't going to send you to nothing that's, that's going to require you to go in your pockets. I don't do that. So Rumble is free. You can, If you ain't got the app, go ahead and download the app. It's free. Go on ahead and, and, and um, put in whatever you got to put in. And then when you hit it, it'll take you to that link. And you can uh, watch the video. Because, like I say, brothers and sisters, I ain't going to hold my tongue. Jesus didn't hold his tongue. The prophets didn't hold his tongue. And I ain't going to hold mine. Amen. Anyway, so let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians. We're still on the subject of do everybody goes to heaven when they die? You know, is, is, is heaven a door like American borders just wide open? Anybody, doesn't matter how you come, you can get in. You ain't got to buy by the rules or nothing. You can just come on in. It's heaven like the border right now, American border right now, where it's flooded. Millions of people are just pouring in there like that. No, heaven is not like that. Hey Amen. We saw in the last, the last, uh, the last video, we see Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, he said, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because Jesus told you that. He gave the answer right there at the beginning. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those that do the will of his Father. So we talked about the store having a list outside, letting you know that if you don't have no shirt, you don't have no shoes, you can't come in. But let's look at the list that is outside of heaven, this list that God made up. Verse 9. He says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, neither idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Go to verse uh, 10 and then we're going to come back and break this down. Verse 10 says, now are thieves, the list goes on. Nor covetous, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. He is giving you a list. On this list, there is 10 things on this list. And on this list, if you, man, listen, when I, when I was preaching in the street, I haven't been in a while. I'm, I'm due to go back again. But I went out there with a sign, with this right here, with the 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10, and I wrote all 10 of them out. And I used to tell people, are you on this list? And they would look at the list and they say, yeah, I lie sometimes. What's fornication? 
I said, you sleeping with somebody you ain't married to? Oh yeah, I'm guilty of that. So let me ask you a question. If you die today, do you think you're gonna go to heaven? They said, yeah, sure, why not? I said, is that right? I said, now you just said you was guilty of, 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 of sleeping with somebody that you ain't married to, right? And they said, yeah. I said, okay, so you're on this list. The Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's the same way with them people telling you, you ain't got no shirt or no shoes. You can't come in here. They mean that. They ain't playing around. They serious about that. You saw the video? The man was not going to let that man in. That's the same way it's going to be on the day of judgment. He says, know ye not. Look back at verse 9. We're going to break this down. He said, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He says, be not deceived. Another word for deceive, synonym, a synonym for the word deceives are tricked, uh, fooled, con, bamboozle, hoodwink, you know, don't be deceived, don't, listen, don't be deceived, don't be tricked, don't be led astray. If the word of God is telling you that you cannot get into the kingdom of God by doing these things, don't let nobody lead you away from this. Because this is the truth. Don't let nobody tell you, oh man, you can get it. I think, I think, I think, I think, uh, that you know if something happened to you God would understand he, he ain't tripping he'll let you that's a lie they deceiving you they're tricking you you've been bamboozled if you believe that he said know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God God got heaven for us that's our inheritance when we die you know it's like I'm gonna use this example you know it's like say your mom and your dad say you know we're gonna leave uh, we're gonna leave this guy some money we're gonna leave our son some money uh, when we die, you know, we got a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars or half a million dollars set up. We don't want to give it to him now. But when we die, we're going to make sure we leave that to him so that he'll be able to, you know, pay off the house. He'll be able to pay off the cars. He'll be able to go buy a business. He'll be able to live. You know, that's what he did. So that's an inheritance that they live to him. He cannot obtain that inheritance until they die. Now, when they die, he can now enjoy the inheritance okay well that's the same thing about heaven god got heaven set up there for us jesus said he went up there to prepare to prepare, prepare a place for us that where he is there we may be also we're gonna get at that at the end of the video but there's a heaven for us for the only way we can inherit that is when we die right because the body says that when we die we're gonna be absent from the body and then we're gonna be present with the lord that's how we get a chance to get into our mansion walk the streets of gold never have to worry about uh, uh ang ang angry people anymore never have to worry about war no more nothing like that nobody stealing nothing from you nobody lying on you nobody mistreating you nobody cussing you out you never have to worry about that no more you're in heaven now all that's behind you amen and that's a place that every last one of us to get you ain't never got to worry about death again you'll never die again you're gonna live like god live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever Amen. So he's saying, know ye not that the unrighteous should not inherit the kingdom of God. He said, be not deceived. Don't be tricked. And he's telling you, the people, he's giving you a list like they gave a list on outside of that store. No shoes, no, no shirt, no service. He's giving you a list now, letting you know. He said, now the fornicators. You might be saying, well, Joe, I ain't never heard that word before. I'm not used to that word in my everyday vocabulary. My, none of my friends talk about no fornication. I never heard that name. Okay, I'm going to break it down for you. Look, at, look right there. The definition for fornication is sexual intercourse between two persons not married to each other. Let me break it down in layman terms. That woman you sleeping with, you ain't married to her, you are fornicating. Yeah, but I've been with her two years. I don't care if you've been with her five. You are fornicating. That man that you sleeping with, lady, you ain't married to him, you fornicating. Don't die this way. Because if you do, I ain't said, God said, <laughs> know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Now the fornicators, fornicators are not going to make it in. So while you're breathing, let's get this thing together. When me and my wife met each other, we was talking on the phone for about seven months before we actually met each other. She was in California, I was in Florida. I met her online. I don't think I never shared this with y'all, but I'm going to share it with you. So... Me and my wife was talking with each other all the time on a daily basis, on a, for every day. Not a day went by we didn't talk to each other. We talked to each other for hours. We fell in love with each other with a phone, right? Then we used to videotape each other and stuff like that. I thought that that would be a good idea because I don't want to be going out on a date with her because I was afraid that I might slip and we might end up fornicating and I don't want to make God mad, so I want to do this right. God had revealed to her in a dream that we was going to get married. God revealed to me in a dream that we was going to get married. So I ended up sending for her. She came down to Florida. We got married the next day and we've been married ever since. 
Amen. Because the thing is, God is letting us know that he wants us to get married because that's his will. When God brought Adam, when God brought Eve to Adam, that is the only woman that he had. Adam wasn't, Adam wasn't sleeping with Eve and the girl down the street and the girl down the way and the girl behind them and all that. Adam was only had one wife. God wants you to get a wife. He wants you to be committed to her and he wants you to be faithful to her. Amen. Amen, man. If you say, what well, I can't find no woman out there. Okay, well, you pray. Get on your knees. That's what I did. Get on your knees and pray and ask God. God, listen, I, you gave Adam a wife. I need me a wife. I don't want to fornicate. I don't want to do nothing stupid. Give me my wife, Lord. Give me the life, the wife that, that I need to be. Just pray and ask, and God will do it. I'm telling you, he did it for me. He'll do it for you. He's not a God of respect the person. He said, be not deceived, so now the fornicators. He letting you know fornicators is not going to get in. This is serious. If you think you can still do it, and if you die like that in a car accident or whatever, America get blown up, and you die that way, and you feel like, ah, oh, God, no. I go. He see me. I go to church every Sunday. I read my Bible all the day. And none of them excuses have nothing to do with you dying as a fornicator. This is serious. If you're a fornicator, turn away from your sin and get married. Amen. He said, now the fornicators, nor idolaters. All right. You know what idolaters is? The root word for idolaters is idol. A lot of people, anything you put before God, anything you put before God is your God. That's your idol. You worship this. You don't necessarily have to get on your knees with your hands lifted up to this idol. You just put this before God. That's your idol. That's what's important to you. Men, if you don't go to church on Sunday because the game, this 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 this, this winter time now, this football game, this football season, I gotta watch my team. I'll stay, I watch T I watch uh football all day, all night on the phone. You know, all day, all night on my TV. A lot of people may be saying that. And people ask you to come to church to hear the word of God, you don't go. So if you don't go, you don't hear the word of God, you don't learn nothing. You don't know nothing about God. You don't have no relationship with God. But you know everything about that football team. You know who got traded. You know who going with this team. You know who going with that team. You see the certain player. You know what school he went to. You know who picked him up. You know how much money he make. You know who he messing with. You know everything. You know how much how much touchdowns he get a season. How much to, he's good to catch the ball on the, on the fourth quarter because if he catch it, he's gonna make sure he take him to the good man. Listen, people know things like that because they put all their time and all their effort. And guess what? That is your idol. That is what you worship. And if you put that before God, you are an idol worshiper. And God says you would not make it into the kingdom of heaven because God is a jealous God. How dare you put anything before him? If you married, how would you like for your wife to put some, somebody else before you? Imagine your wife, your name is Tommy, and your, your wife telling you, Oh, Tommy, I, ca I can't come today because uh, Frank down the street need me. I, I'm going to go to the movies with him. He, he needs somebody to uh, just be with him and, and talk with him. How would you feel? Do you know you won't feel good about that? You come at home from work, who, you, who your wife talking to? She talking to Tommy. Well, she talking to Frank. Well, she talking to Bill. But it ain't you. She's spending time more with them than she's spending time with you. Well, that's the same way God feel. God telling us that he don't want us to be out of worship. I'm going to get a little deeper than that. If you have the Virgin Mary statue or even Jesus statue, St. Paul statue, Guadalupe statue, the statue of Buddha. Anything that you have in your house and you feel like this one is answering your prayers, you praying to that because the Catholic people, listen, let me tell you something. I was raised Catholic. I used to be Catholic. My mama was Catholic. Thank God when I went to prison, God took all that foolishness out of me. I got saved. I learned the truth and I abandoned that and I had to tussle with my mom for years. She finally abandoned that. She gave her life to Christ. She knew that Christ is the only media and shortly after that she passed, the Lord took her home. He took her to heaven. Amen. Uh, but you know, for people, for, for the Catholic people that say, oh, you know, we don't pray to those. Out. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Stop lying. When you go to that church, they got they got in, they got little rooms with that statue there. You go with your rosary and you go. It's a kneeling bench there with a pad on it. Why? Because you're gonna put your knees on it because you're gonna bow down before this statue and you're gonna say, uh, uh, "Hail Mary, Mother of God," and you're gonna say all these rituals. You're gonna say this thing. It, you're going to say this thing over and over again Let me tell you something Let me tell you what the preacher used to tell me What the priest used to tell me Because he ain't no preacher I was going to Catholic school This is before I start becoming a gang member Stop fighting and got thrown out of there But I was going to Catholic school I was young And uh, I remember the teacher telling me one day Hey Joe, you got your rosary? I said yeah She says it's your turn today Go over there, go over there to the chapel And go see, the, go see Father Frank He's in the booth So I mean you know, you know this, is, this is what we do Alright so I go over there I go sit in the booth, he opens up the door. 
I said, forgive, I'm telling him, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Why am I calling this man Father? He ain't my literal father, and he definitely ain't my spiritual father, right? Because my, my spiritual father is God. Right? But I ain't know this then because I'm young. I'm ignorant of the word. So I said, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. He turns around and says, because he's playing God. He said, what you do, my son? I said, I told my mama a lie. I told my mama I was going to be, I was going to go in my friend's house next door, but I went down the street to see my homeboys. And I just lied to her, and I know that's wrong. You know, he gonna say, okay, you got your rosary with you? Say, yeah. Go to that statue, statue Mary, and go tell Mary that you're sorry and say 15 Hail Marys. So I go over there, I go before the statue, and I'm talking to this statue, saying, oh, Mary, forgive me, I was wrong. Hail Mary, Mother of God. This is this, this. I don't I used to know it real good. I don't, I don't care to know that no more, but I used to do that. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. That makes God angry because that's not the way God said. God said there's what, Mary is not the mediator. God said there's one mediator, look there. There's one media, mediator between God and man. And it tells you who, it don't leave you without understanding. It tell you the man Christ Jesus. He is the mediator, not, not Mary. Stop praying to Mary. Stop praying to St. Paul. Stop praying to St. Guadalupe. Stop praying to the statue Jesus. Because that is not the Jesus that, that, that was here 2,000 years ago. That is not the Jesus that died and shed blood for the forgiveness of your sins. That is a statue. That is not human. You talking to this statue, it got ears, but it can't hear. Tell you that in, 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 in Psalms. Look at that. You got ears, it got ears, but it can't hear. It got eyes, but it can't see. You saying this long prayer to you know how many times people get somebody get into a car accident and mom in a car accident they dying in the hospital and people go to the hospital see them and they take you got a chapel here they say yeah they go downstairs they go to the chapel right in front of the statue they cry to the statue Mary talking about please save my mama and then when they go upstairs their mama then die they want to know why God didn't answer their prayer you ain't talk to God you talk to the statue don't get mad at God you mad go get mad at that statue because that statue heard you that, that statue got ears but they ain't hear you. That statue got feet, but they ain't run up there and give God that message. That statue got eyes, but they don't see you. Stop praying to these statues. Look at that, Psalms 115. Read that. Read that. he let you know how he feel about idols. He said, them, them that dumb it, them that bow down to them are dumb just like them. That's what he said. He don't like that. He destroyed the nation. He destroyed, he destroyed uh, the children of Israel in the wilderness for bowing down, for making a calf and bowing down to it. And we're talking about these be the gods that brought us out. And they were celebrating and everything. That's a slap in the face of God. Amen. Anyway, he said, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Men, if you're married, don't cheat on your wife. If you cheat on your wife, you committed adultery. Amen. Women, you're married. Don't cheat on your husband. I don't care if the guy's cuter. I don't care if the guy's easier to get along with. Don't cheat on your husband. That's your husband. You made vows to God that you guys are going to be together till death do us part. Do not cheat on him. You sleep around with somebody else, that's an adultery. God says if you die like that, you won't make it into heaven. You won't inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Same thing for you men. Same thing. Do not commit adultery. Now, it's going to get interesting. This is what I'm talking about. They might take my video down. But preachers in church don't talk about this. I mean, if y'all got y'all go to churches and y'all preachers talking about what I'm about to talk about right now, let me know. Let me know in the comments. You know, let me know in the comments. It's good, it's good to know because I'm telling you, man, I've been going to church, man, for so long, man. I can't find a good church for nothing in the world. I found one. I found one. It's called, it's, it, it, they speak on sin. They speak on living, living holy and stuff like that. I found one. It's just hard for me to get there now because me and my wife live in Mexico. But anyway. The next one is effeminate. <laughs> effeminate. Joe, what is effeminate? What does that mean that an effeminate person won't make it in? Uh-oh. Look at that definition. An effeminate person having, look, listen, having feminine qualities untypical of a man, not manly in appearance or manner. For a man to be acting like a woman, that's not manly. You a man, act like a man. You a woman, act like a woman. I don't see dogs trying to act like cats. I don't see cats trying to act like dogs. I don't see giraffes trying to be the king of the jungle, trying to chase down lambs to go eat them because they know that's a tiger's role. Lambs don't do that. I don't see giraffes trying to be a pig. And I don't see a pig trying to be a giraffe. 
these animals are smart enough to know they're going to play their role. They're going to act the way that God created them to be. But we human beings have lost track. Men today now want to be women. They, they want to get breast jobs. They want to chop that off. They want to get surgery to make it like the woman have. They want to they get rid of their Adam's apples. They want to do physical surgery. They want to grow their hair long. They want to they shave all the hair off of their legs. That is not manly. God gave you hair on your legs for a reason. God gave you hair on your arms for a reason. God gave you an, apple, an Adam apple for a reason. He says, having feminine qualities untypical of a man. It's untypical. It's not typical for a man to be acting like a woman, trying to talk like a woman, trying to walk like a woman, trying to, trying to do everything like a woman. You ain't a woman. All you is is a, you being a hypocrite. You're being an actor. You're acting like something that you are not. Be comfortable. Be content with the person that God made you to be. God wanted you to be a man because he has a woman that's made for you and he wanted to bring y'all together so y'all could be fruitful and multiply and bring kids on the earth and teach them about the ways of God. That's the order of God. God ain't make you to be no drag queen. In, God, in God's book, there ain't no such thing as transsexual or transgender or drag queen or a queen. Now, all that is an abomination. And you will not make it into heaven. I don't care how Joe Biden feel about you. I don't care how his whole administration support you. I don't care about them going out there to the White House and putting all this rainbow uh, flags all in front of the White House. And they're telling the whole world we accept you and all that. And they throwing parties and celebrations. Y'all have pride much. Y'all got a whole month. Everybody else just got a holiday. Y'all got a holiday month, you know. And, and I don't care about all that. The thing is, if you die like that. God said, you will not make it into heaven. God said it. Look what he said. He said, be not deceived. Because if you think that you could be gay, because I've talked to people who are gay, and I told them that while I was out there preaching, and they told me, no, I, I believe I'm going to go to heaven. Okay, you believe that. That's what you believe. That's your understanding. But that's why he tells us not to lean on our own understanding. The word of God says that if you're effeminate, if you're gay, you're not going to make it into heaven. That's what God said. You ain't going to get in the door. Just like the man with no shirt on, no shoes. Don't get in. Doesn't matter. You ain't going to get You don't, He ain't going to make it in. You ain't going to make it in. I ain't doing this to bash nobody. I'm doing this to inform everybody. I want to let you know. Because see, the world ain't telling you this. The world ain't telling you you got to change. The world ain't telling you you can't do this, you can't do that. The world's telling you be who you want to be. Love is love. That ain't what God's saying. He says effeminate, right? Look at the synonym. Look at the synonym for effeminate. It got these different names, but one that says sissified. It says sissy. <laughs> That's what we would say. Anybody got gray that beard, y'all laugh because y'all know it, it, it back in our days, like in the 70s and the 80s. You say you see a guy with any kind of sugar in him. If he wasn't manly, if he wasn't tough, if he wasn't rough, you know what we say? Oh, that boy is sissy. That's what we used to say. You know? Because that's the, that's, that's the synonym of the word effeminate. You know? We should call them sissies. You call them that today, <laughs> they might put you in jail. Might, might, might put you in jail like you didn't rob somebody. Uh, now it says, look at the one under that. It gets deeper. It gets deeper. It says, nor. So we see that if you're a fornicator, you, you're not going to make it in. If you're an idolater, Serving idols and worshiping idols and putting things before God, you're not going to make it in. An adulterer, you're cheating on your husband, you're cheating on your wife, you're not going to make it in. Effeminate, you're a man, you're walking around with your hands, wrist, talking about, hey girl, how you doing? All that old stuff, you're not going to make it in. All right? Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Some, some biblical translations would say, it would just say homosexual. But I like the way the King James worded because it's letting you know the abusers of themselves because for men to do the things that they're doing to each other, you are abusing your bodies. It ain't meant for that to go where it's going. That's the waste, not to enter. You are abusing your body. I'm going to get kind of raw here now. One thing about you, you ain't worry about me cussing, but I'm going to say it the way, it's, the way it is. Amen. He says, no abuser of themselves with mankind. You know, letting you know, not even the abusers of, uh, 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 of themselves with mankind, you ain't going to make it in. Now, I want to show you the Greek definition for that. Let's look at that. Look at that right there. You see on the bottom, 
where it says abusers of themselves with mankind and you see that number because if you want to look up one thing about this Hebrew and Greek dictionary it tells you what the original word actually means. It's better to look it up in the Hebrew and Greek dictionary first and then look in the, in the, in the um, Webster dictionary or whatever later. But look what it says for the definition. For the, This is one word, abusers of themselves with mankind. Look at the number. It says 733, right? So in my concordance, when I press 733, it's going to take me there, right? See at the top where it says 733, we're in the New Testament. So this is the Greek word. It tell you what the Greek word is. The I'm not into pronouncing those words. That don't mean nothing to me. I just want to know the definition. The definition say, you see right there when it says, it's like the, the fourth blue. When you go, when you look to the, when you look, to the left hand side and go down count the blues Greek the translation the pronunciation then definition so the definition is a sodomite right abuser of that defile seek him seek self with mankind but it says a sodomite so the man the people that are abusing themselves with with mankind it calls them sodomites okay you want to know what sodomy look at that look at that I'll tell you now we're going to we, we my, my job is to educate you, to tell you the truth, not butter it up. I keep it what? Yeah. Look, look at the definition. Go look in your Webster dictionary on the sodomy. This is what it says. Anal or oral copulation with another person. Especially anal or oral copulation with a member of a same sex. Men that are doing these things to other men are called sodomites. Do y'all remember in Genesis? Read Genesis chapter 19. God destroyed the Sodomites in Sodom. It was, you heard of the story? Sodom and Gomorrah. God was so angry with that city because the whole city was full of Sodomites. God was so angry with that city that he rained fire and brimstone down on that whole city and he burned every human being up and he destroyed that land to the point nobody could ever, ever, ever live on that land again. That was Sodom. So if you are doing the deeds of Sodom, then you're considered a Sodomite. And a Sodomite is a, is a person who are doing those deeds with another man. And God says, that that type of person is not gonna make it into heaven. I don't care about the world making you think it's okay. It's nothing wrong with it. It's not, it is something okay, it is something wrong with it. It's against God, it's against God, the nature of God. Look at this, look what God said, look at this right here. Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse five. This is how God feel about a man dressing like a woman. All these drags today, and these transsexuals today, and the world giving them high five and giving them space on TV. They got their own YouTube channels. You got gay, you got you got queers, uh, pastors in the church now, and all that dressing up like a woman and everything. And they preaching the message, and people are just holding them, shaking their hand. Oh, I'm so glad you came out. I'm so proud of you. That's bold. Did, 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 did. All right, listen, listen, listen what God. You hear what they say? Let me tell you how God feel about it. He says in Deuteronomy 22 verse 5, he says, The woman should not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. A woman shouldn't be dressing like a man. A woman should not be wearing men's dress shoes, uh, long slacks with a long shirt, with a tie, with a suit jacket, and a low haircut with waves. Talking about uh, 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 she's in the business world. She walking, she talking like a dude. Hey, what's up? What's up, Brenda? How you doing? You know, she's looking for a, man. She's looking for a woman because she feel like she's a man. God said you shouldn't do that. That ain't cool. The world think that's fashionable. Oh, that's the new end. That ain't. <laughs> that ain't. That's, that's why God said there's a wide road that leads to destruction and many that be that's on there. Don't get caught up with everybody doing. Amen. He says, the woman shall not wear which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. He said, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord. He said, you know what that word abomination means? That word abomination means disgusting. For God to see, I, I'm going to talk to some, some of y'all probably going to get mad because y'all already look up to this man. Tyler Perry, who called himself a Christian, got on be always dressing up like a woman, Medea and all that, and he thinking he has fun, that's like he got to go in the room, he got to go put on this makeup, he got to go put on these, these eye things, he got to go put on a wig, he got to go put these boobs on, he got to wear a dress, all that to laugh, but I'm telling you, everybody in the audience, and I used to, I'm guilty of that, I used to watch his shows long years ago, and I used to laugh, I used to say this man crazy, till I came to the truth, and I realized the very things I'm laughing at, is God laughing at it? Because God said that's disgusting. 
God said a man shouldn't do that. God said whoever doing that is an abomination unto the Lord. God don't give a pass. Well, he doing it for comedy. It's cool. No, God don't look at it like that. Yo, Martin want to be a uh, uh, big mama or whatever mama. Yeah, back in the days, I used to watch all that. I'm guilty of that. Years ago, I was guilty of that. I won't watch anything like that now because what I, I look at, if God don't think it's funny, I ain't going to think it's funny. Amen. He says, for all that do so are abomination to the Lord God. Look what he says here about these sodomites, these guys that's sleeping with other men and women sleeping with other men. Look at women. He says in verse 22 in Leviticus, look at verse 22. He says, thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. God says it's disgusting for a man to lie down with a man the same way he would lie down, to a, would lie down with a woman. And, in the, and when I lay down with my wife in the bed, I got my arms around her, I'm caressing her and stuff like that. I'm kissing her on her neck and stuff like that and, you know, everything. But listen, you ain't, a man ain't supposed to do that to another man. A woman ain't supposed to do that to another woman. If you do that, God says that's an abomination. And if you're guilty of that, God said you, when you die, you will not make it into heaven. You are not allowed to come into heaven. Now, it doesn't matter all these things that you've done. If you've done it in the past and you realize that it's wrong, you confess your sins to God and he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Your slate will be clean. You can start off new and continue to keep walking with God. Walk away from those things and walk with God and you will get into heaven. No problem. I'm not saying that if you ever done that in your life, you ain't going to make it in. He said, if you die like that, you ain't going to make it in. Amen. You got to repent. That was the message from Jesus. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist was in the wilderness. Matthew chapter 3. He was out there, out there preaching. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then Jesus came. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And after he died, the disciples went forth and said, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Preachers ain't preaching that now. They're preaching prosperity gospel. They're preaching all day, every Sunday. Love, 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 tie, love, tie, 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 love. I went to so many churches who like every time I go, that's they talking about Tyler. Why you keep talking to me about Tyler? Why you trying to con me into giving you some money so you can pay for your Mercedes Benz and your Jaguar and all that old stuff? Talk about the Lord, man. Tell me some things about God. Tell me the deep things about God. We living in the last days. There's a lot of prophecy being fulfilled. Talk about that. I need to know that. Tell me I have to repent, how to live holy. Tell me that if I'm on this list, I ain't gonna get into heaven. These are important things that we need to know. Not about not 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 about tithing and 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 all this stuff they be talking about he says so he says thou should not he said thou should not lie with mankind as with womankind it is an abomination i was telling you about this word abomination and look but before we get there, he said, and in verse 23, he said, Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. He said, Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there, there too. It is confusion. So look how on the same page, he's talking about a man should not be with another man or a woman be with another woman. And right under that, on the same page, he's talking about nobody should be sleeping with animals, man or woman. Right? He put that on the same page. So I'm just letting you know the same way God look at that about that. The same way if you found out a man was messing around with a sheep and you go, oh, that's nasty. Oh, that's the same way God feel about a man sleeping with another man. Oh, that's nasty. Or oh, a woman sleeping with another woman. Oh, that's nasty. That's how God look at it. He ain't going to make it into heaven like that. You're not. Uh, look at that. Look at this one right here. This is for abomination. When you look up abomination in, uh, in the Hebrew, the number is 8441. And it means, look what it says on the definition. It said, properly something disgusting. Telling you that relationship with two men in the bed doing the things they do. God says that's disgusting. Women in the bed, two women in the bed doing the things they do. God said that's disgusting. And even if it's a man and a woman and you ain't married, God says it's disgusting. But marriage is honorable in the eyes of God. If God sees man and his wife in the bed, God praises that. That's okay. You got the green light to do that. That's why it's important to be married. That's why it's important to do things that's right of God, not what the world teach you and not what the world says, okay? Hey, man, look at this one. Leviticus. He says, 20 and 13. 
He says, if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with woman, the same way he lay down with a woman, he laying down with a man too, caressing him, kissing him on his neck, telling him he like him and he love him and all that other stuff. He want to be with him and this and this and that. Let's do this, let's do that. The same way that you talk to a man, when you're doing that, God is upset with that. Look what he said. If a man also lie with mankind as he lie with the woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood should be upon their head. The Bible said, for the wages of sin is death. Back here in the Old Testament, God used to put them to death. If any rulers found two men in a relationship and they knew that they was gay, they would put them to death. They would put them against the wall and stone them to death. And that's the same way with adultery. A watch adultery would be stoned to death. Y'all remember that that woman in the days of Jesus in uh, uh, January, um, January in John chapter eight. There was a woman that was caught in adultery. The very same act. When they caught her, they was getting ready to put her against the wall to stone her to death. You know. But the thing was, they only brought the woman. They were supposed to bring the man. The law say bring the man and the woman. They only brought the woman. And when they did that, Jesus knew they was in error for only picking the woman. I don't know who that dude was. He must have been a kinfolk. He must have been somebody they know. They didn't bring him. They brought the woman. And they was in error according to the law because the law said he's supposed to bring two. So that's why Jesus turned around and said, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. I don't know what he written on the wall. He probably wrote that chapter where it says that in the law. You know, they seen it, and when he said that, it convicted their conscience because they knew they should have brought Larry. They knew they should have brought Bobby. They knew they should have brought that boy, but they ain't bring him. They only brought the woman. They show favoritism with him. They gonna let him live, but they wanna kill her. So that's why he said, he that is without sin cast the first stone. They couldn't do it. It's not that he's saying that all, everybody's sinning. Nobody could tell nobody nothing. So we take that scripture and we run all the way left with it. That ain't what he was saying. It's because they was guilty of the law. They was hypocrites. You know, they, for some reason they didn't bring the man, they only brought the woman. Amen. So, but what I'm trying to tell you is that people used to be stoned back in the days, you know. We, don't, we ain't getting stoned today, thank God. That we're not under that law anymore. But yet, still, the principles are still the same. God don't want no man lying in the bed with woman. He don't, I mean, with, with, with a man, and he don't want no, no woman lying in the bed with another woman. He don't even want you lying in the bed with another woman if you ain't married to him. You don't want couples in the bed together if they ain't married together. You fornicate. You die like that. You gotta be just like the music, playing musical chairs, the music stopping, you got caught standing up. You're gonna be disqualified. Okay, so now we're in number 10. The list goes on. Ain't a long, long list. Ain't a long list. For real, for real, if you count them, it's 10. These are the 10 new commandments. He said, nor thieves. Can't be a, can't be a thief. Can't be stealing. Let me tell you how tricky, tricky the devil is. One thing about the devil, he don't care about how much Bible you know, how, how much word you know, how seasoned you are in the word, how long you've been walking with God. He don't care about you praying all day, you talking about Jesus all day, he don't care about none of that. He gonna always try to tempt you, he gonna always try to get you to sin. That's the devil's job. That's why the Bible tells resist the devil. Resist means to fight against, fight against that devil. Tell that devil what is written, like what he did with Jesus. He tried to get Jesus, he tempted Jesus. So if you know if he tempted him, he gonna tempt us. He tried to tempt Jesus. Jesus told him, for it is written. He had to keep telling him, it is written, it is written. He tell him what the word of God say. I'm in the car, I'm in these people's cars sometimes, right? One day, my pen, I need a pen. Because anytime I go pick up a car, I got to do inspection. I need the pen and I need to get that pen to them so they can go ahead and sign the, the BOL and I give them a copy of it and I have my copy. But I need a pen, pen very important. My pen ran out of ink, so it's not working. I'm, I'm at these customers uh, place now. I don't have time to go run to the store and I don't have another pen at this moment I get in one of the cars so I could take one of the cars off and I'm hearing in my head Look, they go a pen take that. They ain't, they ain't gonna know nothing about that. They ain't gonna know about that And the people ain't caring about that. Just take that pen. That's that's yours. You need a pen Now ain't nothing wrong with me taking the pen Using it signing it give it to the people and then when I come back put it in the car But the devil trying to get me to take it and put it in my pocket to keep it because I always need a pen Why well, go buy a pen when you got one right here them people ain't gonna remember that they ain't tripping about no pen That's a lie. You don't know what they tripping about. You don't know who that you don't know what that pen mean to them You know the thing is he's trying to get me to take something that does not belong to me and that is stealing Using it fine taking it put it in my pocket that when I give them the car they drive off But I got my pen they pen in my pocket. I just stole that and that's being a thief. And God says hmm, that a thief won't make it into heaven. That's what God said. I don't want to steal. I don't want to lie. I don't want to kill. I don't want to. I don't want to fornicate. I don't want to commit adultery. I don't want to do none of these things. I want to put nothing before God. Nothing. 
He said, nor thieves, nor covetousness. Covetousness that you want everything somebody else got. You want that man wife. You want that man shoes. You want that man car. You want everything. Everything, everything he got, you want his gold. He just got a gold chain. Go chain. You tell me, let me, let me, how much you pay for it? Let me give you 150 for it. You want everything he got. That's covetousness. You wanted something. You wanted something that belonged to somebody else. It's the difference if he say, hey, man, I bought this chain, but, you know, I paid a hundred. I paid a hundred dollars for it, man. But for real, my girlfriend just or my wife just bought me a chain. I don't need another chain, man. You want to buy this chain from me? Then that's different. You like it? You want to buy it? That's fine. But don't be coveting this man. Everything you get, you want this man wife. You want everything he got. That's coveting. There's a lot of people like that. And if you like that, you ain't gonna get into heaven unless you repent, unless you turn away from that. He said, "Drunkards, no drunkards." Yeah, yeah. Can't be getting drunk, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's. I know it's the weekend. I know it's Friday night, you know, I know it's Saturday night, time to go to the club, time to go to the bar, trying to go order some drinks, get drunk, get tipsy and go home and wake up the next day and laugh about it, but I'm going to tell you something, one day you're going to go, you're going to go do that, you're going to wake up in hell if you don't repent. That's not the lifestyle of a Christian, that's not, that's not being holy, God don't want us doing that. That's the, that's, that's the things the world do, that's why he tells us to come, up from, come out from amongst them. You know, he's not telling you to lead the world. He's just telling you don't follow what the world do. The world does that. Have parties, get drunk. We used to be part of that world. I ain't never got drunk, but we used to be part of that world. You know, the world want to get high. They want to drink. They want to fornicate. They want to do everything that's opposite of what God is telling them. That's why it's a lot of people ain't going to make it into heaven. That's why Jesus said there's a wide road that leads to destruction. Why? Because everybody following the ways of the world. He said, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers. No revilers. Now, I know you may be saying, Joe, what in the world is that word, revilers? Look right there. Look down at the bottom where it says revilers. We're in the middle. You'll see the big R. The Greek definition, the number to locate that is 3060. It says abusive, that is blackguard. When you look up blackguard in the dictionary, it says a person who uses foul or abusive language. Someone who uses profanity. So a cusser is not going to make it into heaven. You show up, you cussing, 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 you have a heart attack and you die. That's how you died, a cusser. And when you stand before God, God is not going to let you in that gate because you use his profanity. That's devil talk. That's devil language. I, I used to talk like that. I used to be a beast at that. I used to love cussing. I couldn't sell full sickness without cussing. Amen. But you know, when I once I realized I had I had a brother one day heard me cussing. This is when I just got saved. And I was going to church, I was going to Bible study, you know, about playing both sides of the fence. So I go out there with my homeboys on the compound, get to talking to them. We laugh and we cussing, doing all that. You know, and one of the brothers walked by and he heard me and he said, Joe, uh, brother Joe, let me let me speak to you for a second. And I left my homeboys and I went over and he said, Brother, I just want to let you know, man, you expecting God to help you out in your case and bring you back home to your family, you're gonna have to start living right, man. You have to be for real about this walk. You can't be talking like that, brother. That's cussing. God ain't God ain't no cussing. You know, yeah, only the devil do that. That's devil language. And man, when he told me that, I had two options. Either get mad, cuss him out, tell him who in the world is you to tell me, you can't tell me this and that, or to be smart, be wise, and say, man, you know what, you're right. And I took that more seriously. I stopped hanging around them. And I stopped hanging, because I noticed whenever I hang with the brothers, I don't cuss. You know, when I go to Bible studies with them, I'm learning something every time. I just made a commitment, man, because he was right. I don't want to stay in prison all my life. The folks that gave me 57 years, I want to go home. I seen God perform miracles in some of these brothers' lives on the compound and got them out. I want to be that brother. I want to get a chance to be back out in the street again. You know, so if it takes for me to clean up to do that, then I'm going to let God clean me up, and that's what happened. Hey, Amen. You got to be so you got to be for real about the Lord, man. This is how the Lord is, man. I don't know why people think they can do these things and still make it in heaven because he said don't be deceived. He said don't be deceived. He says, uh, yeah, so that's, that's, what, that's what that is, a foul-mouthed person. Look what he said. Now, look what he said. Let's go back to that. Let's go back. So, he says in verse 10, we read the part where he says, uh, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, which is no cussers, no, no use of profanity. He says, nor extortioners, you know, you're extorting people out of money, you know, uh, uh, telling, you know, that's mostly gang and mob people do stuff like that. 
you know, gangs and stuff like that. Go to stores and tell them well, how much you make. About five hundred dollars a week. Okay, you give me two hundred dollars. I'm gonna make sure that nobody come in here in this store and rob you. So I ain't worried about that. You better worry about it because I, I'm the one protecting you. You know, and they forcing the people to give them money. You know, the, the mob, the Italian mob used to do that in New York a lot. They were big on that. That's how they made a lot of their money, going door to door to each, all them owners and scaring them, telling them that they better give them a certain amount of money a week, and that's what them people did. You extorting them. That's extortion. And if you're doing that and you ain't set and you ain't changed from that, you ain't realized that you're wrong and you die that way, you will not make it into heaven. He says an extortion shall inherit the kingdom of God. So he's letting you know all these things is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. God says about his word, ladies and gentlemen. I want to show you this right quick. I tell you about hell, but you know hell wasn't made for you. Look what he tells you right here, Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Jesus was letting us know that hell was not, well, the lake of fire was not made for, for us, for us human beings. When he first made that, that was not his intentions for us to go there. Look what he says. It says, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, oh, this truck loud. He said, then shall he say also to them on the left hand, depart from me. That's why I tell you, you don't want the Lord to tell you that on the damn truck. Basically saying, get away from me. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. Get, nah, get out of here, no. Get away from me. You don't want God to tell you that. Now, he will tell you that. I know people picture God as this little lovable, happy guy like Santa Claus. He's just happy. Oh, yeah, come on, sit on my lap. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Y'all think God like that? God ain't like that. God says about what he's saying. He love and he also, God is a God of love. He's also a God of wrath. Wrath means punishment, means anger. God will punish you. He'll punish a nation. He'll punish a whole country. Y'all better read the history about, about them Jews. You know, the Jews, man, they lost a lot, man. God, man, we're going to get into that because I want to I wanna also start teaching y'all, man, of the time frame that we're in and how we're drawing close to the end. We're this close to the end. That's why it's important for us to get saved, right? He says, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you curse, into everlasting fire. Look what he says, prepare for the devil and his angels. That was prepared for his devils and his angels. Because God's intention from the beginning was for us to follow him. And if we follow him, we're going to go to God. We're going to go where he at, which is heaven. But all those that made the choice to say, God, I ain't trying to live your life. I ain't trying to do that. I want to be gay. I want to I want to drink. I want to get high. I love cussing. You know, I'm a cheater. I'm always going to cheat on every girl I get. You know, I'm a cheater. I'm an adulterer. You know, I'm a fornicator. I'm going to be a playboy all my life. God's like, okay. So that's the life you chose. Okay, so the one you following, just let, let me let you know. That the end of that road where he going is the lake of fire. So if you follow in him, then that's where you going. Look what Jesus says here. And I'm going to close out with this. We're in John chapter 14 verse 1. Jesus says, so we don't have to worry about that. If we're listening to this message and our mindset is we want to get right with God, we don't have to worry about that. Look what Jesus said. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believed in God, believe also in me. That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus saying you, Jesus was telling his disciples, if you believe in God, you also believe in me, which is him, Jesus Christ, right? He says, in my father's house, who's his father? God, where's his, where God house at? Heaven. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Let me tell you something. Man, I ain't never lived in no mansion. I mean, God bought, God, God blessed me and my wife in a big old house. It ain't no mansion, but boy, it's a big old house. It's three stories. God blessed us with that house, man. That's the best house I ever lived in my whole life. And God blessed us with that. But let me tell you something. I trade that house in any, any given day for a mansion. The Lord is telling us that he got a mansion in heaven for us. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. In other words, if, I, if it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you. Because I ain't no liar. Anything I tell you is the truth. That's what, that's what Jesus is saying. That's why we can trust him. That's why we, we can rely on him. Because he's not a liar. He's not a man that he, shall, that he shall lie. Amen. He said, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. In other words, when I die... And when, I, when, I, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm in that, that ground for three days, when I resurrect and when I appear before you and go up into the heavens, I'm going up there to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, which is in heaven, there you may be also. God wants us in heaven. God wants us. He don't want us in hell. He don't want us in the lake of fire. He didn't prepare that for us. He want us in heaven. 
but you but you gotta follow him and if you're following him you gotta follow the rules it's like when you get a job the man wants you to work for him but you still gotta be to work or you gotta be at work at eight o'clock in the morning you can't punch out until five o'clock can't be punching out 12 o'clock go home when you want to do and when you at work can't be on your phone all day you got work to do we have a meeting you got to be there at the meeting Whatever job performance we say that you have to be done by the day, you got to do that. You can't be sitting around talking all day, talking about the game all day. You ain't doing the rules. So if you ain't doing the rules, you're going to end up getting fired. You ain't going to no longer work with this company. We understand that in this world. Why do we think that when we die, I die a drug addict, I die a cuss, I die a fornicator. Now everybody talking about, oh, rest in peace. He's up there with the angels. You a lie. He up there with the angels. No, he ain't. If he ain't got right with God, he ain't up there. No matter what you say, no matter what no YouTuber say, no matter what nobody say. The word of God says, if you die like that, you ain't going to make it in. He tells us right here, verse 4, and he's saying, whether I go, you know, and the way you know. He's telling the disciples, you know, where I'm going, you'll know the way. But Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and, and, and how can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus says unto him, I am the way. Notice he didn't say, I'm one of the ways. Because my mother Mary is a way too. St. Guadalupe is a way too. Buddha is a way too. Yeah, you can go to Allah. Yeah, you can go to Prophet Muhammad. No. He says, I am. He didn't say, I'm one of the ways. He said, I am the way. Meaning that he's the only way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't come to him through Mary. I don't care how many I don't care how many prayers you pray to Mary. You can't come to him through Mary. You can't come to him through Saint Guadalupe. You got to come through him through Jesus. Jesus says, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me." Me, me. Amen. Thank you guys, man, for spending time with me, man. I hope y'all learned something today, man. I'm gonna do a part three on this. I ain't done. I ain't done. I got a whole lot more to say. The reason why I, I want to do this subject because I want you to know that heaven is serious. Hell is serious. God wants you in heaven. You have to live by his rules. Amen. You have to. You cannot, just like you can't walk in the, them people place with no shirt on, same way you can't walk in, uh, in heaven being an adulterer. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter if you done, if you're guilty of all that on that's on the list. It doesn't matter. Right now, you need to be asking God, God, forgive me. I'm wrong. Father, forgive me. I heard this message. I heard this word. I believe that this word is of you. Lord, I've been wrong. I confess to you I'm wrong. I'm, Lord, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me in Jesus' name to turn away from these things. I'm going to start reading my Bible. I'm going to start praying every morning. I'm going to stay away from these things that I know that's not of you. And Lord, I just ask you to help me. Now, I'm telling you, man, when you do that, man, he'll deliver you. He'll deliver you, man. I'm telling you. God is the deliverer, man. God can, God, God can pull you out of anything. I don't care what you're addicted to. He can take you away from that. Amen. God is good. Anyway, so I want to I wanna say a prayer. I want to ask you guys, too, to keep my wife in prayer, man. My wife has been going to be kind of sick lately. You know, her name is Elizabeth, man. She's been kind of sick lately, man. She's been having stomach problems, man. You know, y'all know that's my baby girl, man. I love her, man. And I just want y'all to keep her in prayer, right? Stand in the gap with me on prayer, you guys. Uh, just, just pray, you guys, that, that, she would, that God will remove you know, whatever pain that she's going through in her stomach, you know. So I thank y'all for that. Also, there's been some people on here that asked for prayers. Another girl named Elizabeth, uh, she asked that we keep her in prayer and her family in prayer. We're going to pray about all that right now. Uh, it's another lady that uh, I, I, I was I was working, but I, I, I kind of looked at the text a little bit, but then I kind of lost it. I don't know where it was, but it was a lady that was saying, please pray for her, her mother. She said something about her mother uh, was kind of being evil towards her and stuff like that. You know, and at the end of the day, you know, some people are like that, but at the end of the day, you know, if your mom is showing you hatred and she, she's treating you evil, okay, that's her. That's her character, but you be you because the Bible tells us that we got to honor our mother and our father, you know. Uh, he said, long life will you live when you do that. God wants us to honor our mother and father. It doesn't matter how they treat us, how, what they say about us, how they feel about us. At the end of the day, we got to do our part, and our part is to honor our mother and our father and just keep them in prayer. So, okay, so we're going to pray about it. Does anybody else have any prayer requests, man? Sometimes just go ahead and write it down in the comment, you know, and uh, we're going to pray about it. All right, so let's go ahead and, and pray. And I want to thank you guys once again for coming coming to the uh, to the channel today. And like I said, we're going to continue to keep talking about this word. You know, I, I know God wants you to know this word. And I want to tell y'all something too, man. Well, I'm going to post. Be on the lookout. I'm going to put up a post. Do y'all know it was a man 
that went in uh, Maine, and I be in Maine a lot. You know, you, you know, y'all know I travel from the from the from the West Coast all the way to the East Coast, and I go all the way up to Maine. Maine is right next door to Canada. Let me tell y'all about Maine. Maine is a real quiet city. It ain't nothing like Los Angeles. It ain't nothing like New York. It ain't nothing like Chicago, Detroit, Miami, or none. It is quiet. It is so peaceful over there. Right? Whenever you go through there, man, it's just so quiet. It's like lunch. Like nobody don't even live there. And they had some man today. I think it was today or yesterday. This man went and he shot and kill he killed 22 people the number went up from 16 to 22 it went up to 22 and then he and then they say he injured 50 to 60 so this man that shot about 50 60 70 people 22 of them is dead and they say the numbers are expecting to rise because there's people in the hospital you know that, that that's on life support that's that they end up dying then that number get added to the 22 it'll be 23 so it's going up but i'm just saying man what caused this man what was his motive to go around and uh, just start shooting people. This happened in uh, Maine, in Lewiston, Maine. So uh, after this, after I upload this video later on tonight, I'm going to look on my community page. I'm going to be uploading to stuff on the news, stuff from the news on uh, on, on that page because stuff that I know, I feel like y'all should know. Because I remember, I be telling y'all, y'all got to be careful out here. We are living in some dangerous times right now. You got to be careful. There's people, man. We got a lot of crazy people in this world, in this country today, coming through that border. And you got people. I want to know why this man did all this killing. He he killed all these people just for nothing. He went into a, a bowling alley, just shot everybody up. He left there and went to a bar and just shot everybody up. And this man's still on the run. They ain't found him. They got video footage of him. They know his name. They got his car. They know where he live at. But, you know, he didn't disappear. They can't find him. But that, that's not good that they can't find him because he might strike again. So y'all make sure. Y'all, matter of fact, I'm going to put the news clipping right here. I said I was going to post it. I'm going to put the news clipping right here. Y'all just click on it. It's going to be right after number two. I'm sure number one is going to be my other YouTube channel for those you want to go uh, look at some Bible study. Number two is my Rumble channel. Just in case they suspend this, you can always go to Rumble channel. I keep posting over there. And number three is going to be this news article about this man that killed, eight, uh, killed, uh, killed 22 people already. And the numbers still count. By the time you watch this video, it might even be higher than that. But, you know, like I tell y'all, man, y'all got to be careful, man, y'all out there. Y'all got to be alert of your surroundings. Jesus says in the last days, it would be some perilous times. Perilous means dangerous. We're living in some dangerous times. Be, be, be careful when you go into malls and when you go into grocery stores and Walmart. You got to be on the lookout. You got to be watching people. You got to be looking around because you want to make sure when you see that man come out with a gun, you want to be able to <laughs> run and go somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be standing right there and get shot. You know, and uh, so anyway, man, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you so much for allowing me to hang out with my brothers and sisters, Lord God. This is a beautiful time where we can come together and hear your word, learn your word as a blessing. Father, one more one, Lord, I, I want to pray, Lord God, for my wife, Lord God. I pray for her stomach. I pray for that pain that's in her stomach, Lord. I pray that you remove that pain in the name of Jesus. Lord, I know there's nothing impossible with you. You can do all things, Lord God. And by faith, I thank you, Lord God, that, you re that you're going to remove that pain from her stomach. Father, we pray for the woman, Elizabeth, Lord God. You know, she said a prayer request. She want to pray. She want us to pray for her, pray for her family. Lord, I don't know the whole situation. She only, she only put a little on the page, but you know the whole situation. Lord, we stand in the gap for her. Elizabeth, because she's trying to get with you. She says she's going to buy a Bible. She's going to start reading her Bible. She's drawing close to you, Father. We are praying for her soul. We're praying for her family, Lord God. Whatever turmoil, whatever uh, thing is in her family that's not of you, we pray for peace in her family in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Lord, we pray for that woman who's going through that situation with her kids. Well, not with her kids, with her mother. Father, we pray for them. We pray that you would show her favor with her mom. We pray that you would deal with her mom's heart, soften her mom's heart, that she would stop being so evil, so, so mean to her daughter, Lord God. But that she would treat her daughter, Lord God, as though her daughter was dying, that she want to treat her so good before she leave, in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that we know we hear the prayers, Lord, that we continue to pray for the people in Israel. We pray for even the people in Gaza, Lord. It's a lot of innocent people that's not caught up with this, this stuff that uh, Hamas is doing, Lord. We pray for the innocent souls, Lord. We pray for them to be saved. We pray for why, why they over there, Lord. They call out on Jesus, Lord God, and get saved, Lord God, because they, they really... They're really, in, they're really in the last days, the last moments, the last minutes of their life, Lord God. And, Lord, we just pray for them. We pray for those people in Ukraine, Lord God, with the war going on over there, Lord. Lord, I understand why a lot of things are going on, Lord God. I just pray at the end of the day for all souls to be saved. I pray that they get saved. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. God bless you guys. See you on the next upload.